As you may have heard, there have been some concerns about various behavior with the new Epic 12 volt 460 amp hour battery. Uh, for those who have connected their battery to a Victron Servo GX controlled system, you may have seen uh, high voltage alarms, particularly at the end of a charge cycle. You may have seen some random fluctuation in voltage, uh, various uh, difficult to explain issues. Working to get to the bottom of those issues, we think we've got some pretty good insight into what's happening now. So first I wanna take a minute to thank Epic for their cooperation in uh, helping us investigate this as well as working side by side with us to investigate. And second, I wanna make clear who us is. Uh, I've been working closely with Andre Cormier from the Yacht Rigger up in Tampa. Um, Andre has and his company have completed several of the early installations of these batteries and hence have been instrumental in helping figure out what's happening um, while at the same time taking a results-based approach, not panicking when we see some unusual behavior and looking to, to further understand it. So Epic has been kind enough to provide Andre and I with a CAN to USB adapter harness that allows us to see what's happening within the batteries themselves. Right now, I have my Bench 460 on a little bit of a re rapid discharge cycle. I've got my trusty heat gun uh, drawing about 170 amps out of the battery right now. Uh, I just wanna bring the battery off of its 100% SOC down to 95, 98% so that we can then watch a charge cycle and see what's happening. While we're watching that happen, one interesting thing that I have noticed, uh, if you look over here, I've got, I'm showing 96% SOC on the battery. That is as measured by a Victron Smart Shunt. Uh, if I look over at the BMS itself, it's showing 99% SOC, uh, a 3% SOC drift, um, despite the fact that we are at 445 available amp hours out of the 460. If you do the math quickly, you'll figure out that's really not 99%, um, but there does seem to be some biasing in the gauge or the, uh, the SOC calculations, probably to make it behave a little bit more like a fuel gauge on your car or the battery meter on your phone that you're used to. Um, spoiler alert, if you weren't already aware, all of those things lie to you. They are not linear, and it appears that the SOC calc in the Epic 460 is also not linear. Okay, so we've got the battery down uh, to 96% as indicated by its BMS, or its BMS and 93% as calculated by the smart shunt. But more importantly, we've got about uh, 27 and a half amp hours of current out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my loads and now we see the battery down to six amps of current draw, probably most of that coming out of the, um, out of the heat gun as it runs its fan to cool off. We will now go ahead and plug in the inverter to get it charging. My high-tech approach here. So still discharging at about six amps. On our way, uh, the battery is showing 13.2 volts, uh, pretty steady. Now we're starting to charge. We can see that we've got the inverter in bulk just ramping up its charge current, so up to uh, about 50 amps of charge. Sixty. This is a fairly little multi, dialed down a little bit. So um, uh, we've got about 28 minutes of charge time left, according to the BMS. So we're gonna pause here, and I'll be back to you uh, as we are closer to fully charged. Okay. So charging is just about complete. We are seeing the voltage start to climb on the pack. It's at 13.87 volts. The inverter is set to charge at 14.2 volts for absorption. So we should push ourselves over that 14 volt threshold 
Right now we're still charging at 37, excuse me, 57 amps. Um, but that will probably drop here pretty quickly. We're at 13.97. So we're just about to creep, creep over the 14 volt threshold. And in fact, we now are. Um, we are also seeing a few other interesting things. So the cell deltas are coming up 0.054 volts, 54 millivolts. Uh, cell delta, we're seeing cell two being balanced. It's being, uh, resistance is being applied to try and bring it back, but it's continuing to run away from the other cells faster than they, um, then they're coming up. Uh, and now we are down to 28 amps of charge current, 14.06 volts. So we've got that event coming up pretty soon, I expect. I'm gonna step out of the way so that we can make sure we can see the, um, the voltage on the multi, uh, as well as we're, I've got my meter configured or uh, reading over there, watching the voltage as well. Um, so we're down to 18 amps of charge acceptance. The pack thinks that it's completely full. Um, we are also up to 14.09 volts, almost 14.1 volts. So that's coming up to speed nicely. Uh, we should be getting our disconnect event any minute now, probably. So down to 14 amps, just another uh, couple of minutes before we drop down into the single digits and then down below three and a half amps. Uh, we also see that our cell delta is now at 73 millivolts, 0.073 volts. So uh, indications the balancer probably isn't keeping up uh, as we get up there in the charge state. Um, down to five and a quarter amps or thereabouts, five and a half, five and a quarter. All right, we're dropping down. We're right at three and a half amps. We're below three and a half amps. So if we hold here for 10 seconds, we should see the charge FETs disconnect. Let's see. And there we go. So now we've got our overvolt full, our, excuse me, our full charge protection FOV pack one fault lit. And we are seeing some pretty big swings in the, we saw for a bit there, the, the swings in the multis output, 14.1, uh, up to 14.2, uh, the meter is capturing a little bit of run up and down. So I saw 14.1, now I see 14.19, down to 14.08 it looked like. Um, so I uh, see the multi kind of struggle a little bit to control voltage. Uh, if we go ahead and put a load on here, put a 20 amp load on, we'll see it drop down and then we see it come back up. But now, just to show you what's happening, if I take that load off, right, I've just disconnected that 20 amp load. We see power run up a little bit. Whoop, we saw 14.4, now we see 13, now we see 14.2. I'm gonna turn it back on again. So we'll see it dip pretty low, come back up. And now I'll turn it off. There'll probably be a delayed effect. And then we see it, yeah, up there to 14.8 volts. So. Without a battery connected and loads coming and going, that's when you start to really see that voltage variation that we saw there. So um, one thing I do wanna show, I'm gonna just unplug the multi now. So the inverter's disconnected. Uh, we still see that our charge MOSFET is off and we are still in our full charge protection. I'm gonna turn on a 20 amp load again. So the load is on. And what we see is that the charge MOSFET is gonna come back on. The, over, the full charge protection remains active, but we see our charge MOSFET come back on. Um, now, the minute I turn the, my load back off, we should see the charge MOSFET go back to closed. Um, I, I'm really not sure why that's happening. Um, I d we're not low enough to clear the fault, um, the full charge protection fault that's being raised. So uh, I would think that the MOSFET would stay off even with the load applied, but that's not the behavior that I'm seeing. Again, I've just turned the load back on um, and now we see our charge MOSFET come back on. So that one's a little bit of a stumper to me so far. Gonna have to talk to Epic a little bit more about that one and try and figure it out. So that's the basic 
event that is occurring when the charge fets are closing because the battery believes that it has reached full charge. Uh, there's probably a couple of ways to avoid encountering this. The first of which, and probably most obvious of which, is to simply <clears throat> set absorption voltage a little bit lower. So uh, it's, uh, the working theory right now is that there's probably no harm done by setting absorption voltage to 13.8 or 13.9 volts. Um, balancing starts on these batteries at 13.4 volts, so there shouldn't be an issue there. Um, still working with that to understand it better and verify that there aren't any downsides to that. But um, this is the first in a series of videos that we're gonna do exploring the, the issues that may be present here. Um, the next one that we'll take a look at is potential cell balancing issues. I did allude to that a few times during this video where we saw some relatively, where we saw the cell deltas really climbing as the, the cells got near full charge. This battery is pretty ch challenging to keep balanced, particularly with a passive balancing BMS. The battery is composed of eight 230 amp hour cells. They're in a two parallel four series connection scheme. So each uh, cell is effectively a 460 amp hour cell. Balancing those 460 amp hour parallel packs with a passive probably one amp or so balancer is going to be very challenging. Uh, we're going to explore in, in the next video whether that is contributing to some of the, the challenges that people have seen in the field and whether there's anything we can do from a tuning perspective to perhaps improve that.